Welcome to this tutorial request in which we will be creating a user interface uh, with the focus of an ammo counter, but we will have a little bit of a more graphical ammo counter in the form of having each bullet representing one widget. So let's jump into it. Before we continue with the video, if you like what I'm doing here on this channel, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel a lot. Anyway, let's get back to the video. So this is what we will be creating today. We have a character in this level, it doesn't really matter. We're doing a UI uh, tutorial here. So what we have, we have is a key bound to R, which will be reloading our bullets. So then we see our user interface fills up with our bullets. We have another key that simulates firing, which is now the E key in this case. So every time I press the E key, one of the bullets will be consumed. And I can press so the multiple of them are playing at the same time. I can reload again and they come up, come back with their animation. And if we have partially reloaded and press R, we remove all the children before we add all of them in with an animation like this. So this is essentially what we will be creating in this tutorial. So here we are inside of Unreal Engine 4.26. Uh, all I have here is just a landscape with a character in it. Doesn't matter which character you're using. And I have a texture that I'm going to be using for my widgets. This is essentially all. So uh, let's start off by creating this interface. First off, we're gonna focus a little bit around our character. Our character is gonna be having a few different things happening. It's going to have a button, which we will um, bind an event to, uh, which will be our reload, and we will have another button that simulates shooting. So we can just start off by creating those. So keyboard E will be our shooting button and keyboard R keyboard R will be our reload button. In addition to that, we also want to bring out the event for begin play because we want to set up some basic things like our UI in the beginning. Currently we don't have a UI, so let's start off with creating one of those. We'll go to widget blueprint, we'll call it w underscore ammo hud. And now we can already go back to our character and start doing some things here. So what we can do is we can get our controller. And we're going to need our controller because we're going to be creating a widget. And this controller is of the normal controller. We want to have it of player controllers. We cast it to player controller. Then we right click and do a create widget and we make sure to do our W ammo HUD widget. So when this works, we send in our player controller as the owning player over here. Uh, in addition to that, we can also promote this variable. So we have a reference to our HUD. That's always good to have. So we we'll call this HUD ref. And then when we have done that, we want to actually add this uh, HUD to our viewport. So we'll do that. Like so. And that's more or less everything that we want to do there. Next, we want to open up our ammo HUD. And we want to get a horizontal box. This is where we will be storing our ammo widgets. And we'll place it somewhere here down in the left. We'll make sure to give this a name like uh, ammo container maybe. And we'll make sure to check the box for is variable. So we get a variable reference to it. We can anchor this in the bottom left because that seems to be the area where we want to put it. We can click in size to content to make sure that it fills out whatever content it has inside of it. And that's pretty much all we need for now. Now we need to create the, hub, the widget that we want to put in this horizontal box. So we'll right click, make a user widget, uh, call it w underscore single ammo is a good name. And we'll open that up. We'll change from fill screen to the side on screen. We will remove our canvas panel and we'll just add a image. We're going to keep it fairly simple. So keep an image over there and for the brush over here we can open it up and in my case my texture is called Venerexa Ammo Default so we're gonna choose that and this is gonna be our ammo icon. Now we want to make sure that we can communicate between the player, the HUD 
and the single ammo. How do we do that? Well, we're going to create a, use, a blueprint interface to make this a little bit cleaner. So we'll call this BPI underscore ammo. We'll be fine. We'll create a few methods in here. We'll create one that's called consume ammo. And we'll call one that has the name reload ammo. The reload ammo one we can send in an input for of the type integer and we'll call this the reload amount. So this is the number of bullets that we will be reloading with. That's all good and fine. Our ammo HUD now, we want to go to our class settings and make sure to add this uh, interface we created, so BPI ammo. This way the player can send the information to the HUD. But we also want to communicate with our ammo so what we'll do is we'll actually go to our ammo and add the same blueprint interface here as well. Like so. So now we go back to our player and what do we want to do? Well, we want to get our HUD reference because that's what we're sending our information to. And we want to say when we're pressing E, we want to consume ammo. So this is essentially us shooting once. And when we press R, we want to reload. So we get the one called reload ammo message. And we'll bring that one out. Now here we can define how many times or how many bullets we want to reload. We'll just put a value here now. Uh, this is up to you. This is something maybe you'll want to make a variable for. Uh, actually, let's have some good habits and actually make a variable for it. So reload amount over here. We compile it so we can set a default value. The default value is set to 6 because I had typed in six before I made the variable. So you can have this as something that you change dynamically over the course of the game. So if you have seven, you just reload seven and this will still work dynamically as it plays. So we're sending these pieces of information out to our HUD. How will we handle it in the HUD? Well, let's go to the HUD, remove the pre-construct and the tick, and we'll make sure to go to, uh, let's see here, we want to have our uh, interfaces implemented here, so I'll implement both of them, like so. So if we start with the reload, what do we want to do there? Well, first off, we're getting a reload amount. We can set this to a, a variable. So this will be our reload amount, the number of bullets that we have. In addition to that, we also want to, when we reload, we want to clear out uh, any other widgets that we might have in this point of time. So we'll just do a clear children on the ammo container that we created. Now that we have cleared out all the widgets inside of it, we can start adding the widgets. So let's make a loop here, a for loop, and we'll go from index zero to the last index being the amount of bullets that we have put in, except minus one since we're working with an array, of course. So that's how many times we want to do this. In addition to this, we want to now have a player controller because when we add widgets, we need to have a player controller. So on our construct here, we're gonna right click and type in get owning pawn. From that, we get uh, the pawn that's controlling us. From that, we get type in get controller and we get the controller that's controlling the pawn. However, we need a player controller. So we're gonna cast this to a player controller. And if that succeeds, we're going to promote it to a variable, which we call player controller. Ref. Now that we have our player controller, we can make use of it over here. And we can type in create widget. The widget we want to create is of the single ammo type. And we want to use the reference to the player controller that we just created. After we have done this, we can now add this widget to our ammo container. So we'll just drag out the ammo container, type add child to horizontal box, and make sure to hook up the return value of the created widget into the content input. Now that we have done the reload, we now have some idea of how the consuming is going to work. What we're going to be using is our reload ammo that we have. 
and we're gonna subtract it with one because we are shooting one bullet. When we have shot one bullet we want to make sure that we haven't gone below zero. So we make a check here if this is a value that is greater or equal to zero and put up a branch by pressing B and left clicking. If it is greater than zero, greater or equal than zero, then we know we have a valid value here and we want to uh, shoot that bullet. So what we do is we get our ammo container and we can get a child at, that means it wants to have an index, so we'll drag out the current bullet that we are on. And for this we're gonna say consume. Consume has a message because we also implemented the interface on the single bullet level as well. So now it is going to get a message whenever we fire. And this is essentially all we need on the HUD. Let's go over to our single ammo. We need to remove the tick, we need to remove the pre-construct, and we want to uh, implement our consume ammo that we just uh, called on from the other place, uh, from the HUD. Here we want to do something that consumes our ammo. However, we can make this a little bit fancy. We can go to our designer, we can go to the animation down here and make sure that you have timeline, click, timeline clicked. And let's click the plus animation here and call this consume ammo. Uh, shoot ammo. Consume ammo was taken because we have chosen that name somewhere else. So shoot ammo will be fine. Uh, we'll add a track. We'll make sure that we take the image which is the image that we have over here as our brush, so the, the icon we're using for our widget. And we want to make this disappear now. So something we could do is we could get, for example, uh, transform. And here we have translation, rotation, and scale, and we could, for example, shrink this down. So what we could do is we can bring this to the timeline of, let's say we want it to disappear in half a second. We go to half a second, and we say, actually, let's start off here and make sure that we have the scale set here. So we click here for an, a new keyframe, then we go to time 0 0.5, we open up the scale and we say we want to have 0 on x, 0 on y. And in case you did, I got keyframes here at once, but if you want to make sure that you have them, you can just click them here. And now we can drag on the timeline and you'll see what will happen. So this is what's going to happen, it's going to just disappear like this. Let's create another an animation and we can call this uh, reload animation. We should probably be consistent and call this shoot ammo animation. Uh, the reload animation, we can do something similar but different. Uh, we can add a track, we can choose the image again, we can use the track for transform and we can do something like it sliding into place. So let's find our translation. Let's say we want this to happen over one second. So we'll go to one second, we'll go to transform, we click a keyframe, so we have a keyframe for that. We can now go back to our start and we can find the position where we want it to be before, uh, in the beginning of the animation. So I know that this uh, icon is 64 pixels large, so we can say 64 in X, we'll see that that ends up to the right. We want it to be bottom left and going up to the right, so we can instead change this to minus 64. And we change Y to 64 and we'll see that that drops it down. So this will work fine. So we'll add a keyframe at the zero time for this translation and we move this scrubber and see what that looks like. So it's gonna slide into place like so. Something else we can do to make it a little bit nicer is we can make it uh, go from invisible to visible. So we can add a track for uh, render opacity. We can make sure that it has the opacity it currently has by clicking the keyframe when we're at time one. Then we go back to zero and we set it to what we want it to start as. So in this case, we want it to be zero, which means invisible. We set the keyframe and now we can check what the animation looks like. So that's what it's going to be looking like. So let's make use of this now. 
Inside of our consume ammo, we now want to play an animation that says, uh, well, the, the shoot animation that we had. So we can do a play animation and we want to bring the one that has finished the event. And the reason for that is because after we have done this, we want to scrap this widget itself. The widget reference here will be self, the one that we're currently in. The animation here will be the one that we call the shoots. Okay, I can't get the reference like that. We'll get it over here. We'll drag it out like so. And we want it to go forward and we want it to do something when it's finished. When it's finished, we want to call on the remove uh, from parent. So this means that we will remove this widget from its parent. On the construct, however, that is when this widget is created. And since we have that on the reload, it makes sense now to use the reload animation here now to play that animation. So we play animation, like so. And it has self animation playing forward. That seems good to me. Uh, let's double check everything here. This seems good. Let's try this out and see what it looks like. So we play and now if I press R, we get a reload, all the bullets go in, I press E, I consume a bullet. I press E multiple times, you can see all the bullets go away one at a time. I press R, we remove everything and reload again, and we can start shooting them away. And you can do this as much as you feel like. Uh, that's basically it. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.